Christ the Rock, the Rock of Ages Christ as a rock is found in both the Old and the New Testament. There are certain things or elements that God loves to associate himself with, things like fire, the well, and rocks. The word rock indicates firmness, permanence, stability, and faithfulness. Our God is a God of truth. He is the rock, the immovable foundation, meaning He is stable in nature, invincible in His power, and unchanging in His counsels, promises, and His ways. Deuteronomy 32 verse 4 says, He is the rock, His work is perfect, for all His ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is He. This was a song that Moses sang to praise God that He is blameless, without fault, a refuge, and a stronghold for His people. He is the rock was the theme of this song. That was the first thing that he said in this song as part of proclaiming the name of the Lord. The rock implies aspects of perfection, which is the first thing that he said, that his works are perfect. No blemish is found in God's works because there is no blemish in his being. God identifies himself as the rock because of the qualities of a rock which are similar to his. God is reliable, stable, and trustworthy. We can always depend on our God when we stand on him. He will bear us up. He is permanent. Our God is eternal. And he is from everlasting to everlasting, the rock of ages. He is our firm foundation. Unlike homes that slide down, crumble, and crush after a storm because they have been built on shifting sands of this world and its philosophies. Jesus Christ is the only sure foundation of our lives. He is the rock on which we can build on, which will ensure that our lives will remain standing even after a storm and a hurricane has beaten upon us. We can build our lives on this rock called Jesus Christ by hearing and doing the word of God according to Matthew 7 verse 24 and 25 which says therefore whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them I will liken him unto a wise man which built his house upon a rock and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. In life, there are some winds and storms that rise up on one's life. Let me assure you this. Storms do come, but they are not permanent. They come and go. They must leave you standing because of your foundation. If your foundation is the rock, the sure foundation, you will remain standing. You will not crumble. During the storm, remain calm because your foundation will not crack. Don't run all over the city trying to find sympathizers. It does not matter who or what has provoked the winds and the storm in your life. Know that your foundation will continue to carry you. He is to be trusted, and He is the rock and is dependable. Our God is our refuge from the storm. In the midst of a storm, we can find refuge next to, behind, or in the cleft of a rock. Our lives may calm and prosper, but storms come to test our foundation this is why we need to attach and be in Christ Jesus the rock, so that we can be able to stand during the time of trouble. Not only does he provide us refuge, he also provides shelter from the heat of the day. The rock also provides water, according to Numbers 20 verses 8 to 11. Take the rod, 
and gather thou the assembly together, thou and Aaron, thy brother. Speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him. And Moses and Aaron gathered the congregation together before the rock. And he said unto them, Hear now, ye rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also. It is a mystery and a miracle, but yes, the rock gave them water. And he can give us water too, to refresh us and satisfy us. 1 Corinthians 10 verses 3 to 4 And did all eat the same spiritual meat, and did all drink the same spiritual drink, for they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. Moses struck the physical rock, which was symbolic of the Son of God, and it gave them water to drink, but it was the spiritual rock that followed them in the wilderness, and that rock was not some other God, but it was Christ Jesus. He is the rock. He is the same God who also gave them manna, meat, water, and led them across the wilderness, delivered them from their enemies, and placed them in the land of promise. He did all these things for them. In other words, all that God did in the Old Testament is what Jesus is to us today. The same rock is still gushing out streams of living water, and it is open to us to drink. Hebrews 13 verse 8 says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Ephesians 2 verses 19 to 22 says, Now, therefore, ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints, and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundations of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together grows into a holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. The cornerstone was the first rock used to establish the foundation of an ancient building. The apostles and prophets were the foundation, but Jesus Christ was the first stone, or the cornerstone to begin the church. Apostle Paul was saying believers are part of this structure, whose foundation comprises of apostles and prophets, and the Lord Jesus being the chief cornerstone. By virtue of being part of the structure, we automatically become the temple of the Lord. Romans 9 verse 33 says, As it is written, Behold, I lay in Sion a stumbling stone and rock of offence, and whosoever believes on him shall not be ashamed. Here Apostle Paul was quoting from the book of Isaiah, where the prophet describes the Lord as a rock of offence and a stone of stumbling, because they failed to receive him and they rejected him. The people struggled to accept the idea that righteousness is found only through faith in Christ. So, to whoever does not receive Christ, he becomes a rock of offence and a stumbling stone. But to us believers, this rock is everything good, wonderful, and awesome. The rock is everything we hope to become, but to those who are disobedient, he is a rock of offence. Matthew 21 verses 43 to 44 says, Therefore say I unto you, 
The kingdom of God shall be taken from you, and given to a nation, bringing forth the fruits thereof. And whosoever shall fall on this stone shall be broken, but on whomsoever it shall fall, it will grind him to powder. The Bible is saying, If you fall on the stone, yes, you will be broken, humiliated, and humbled, but you can be saved. But on whoever the rock falls on, it will grind to destruction. David said in 2 Samuel, The Lord is my rock and my fortress and my deliverer. The God my strength in whom I trust, my shield and the horn of my salvation, my stronghold and my saviour. God bless you.